All right, well, we are at the 2023 uh, ARA show in Orlando, and I'm joined by Justin Walters from GeoForce. Welcome. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. It's exciting times. So I haven't been to the ARA show in a few years now, obviously, with everything going on over the past few years. And so getting back over to America is quite exciting. And getting to chat to some of the vendors and rental companies in the US is, is always on the, on the top of the list for us. So sure. really interested to learn more about GeoForce and sort of where you fit into the market. So appreciate you making the time. Absolutely. Happy to be here. So maybe just for the audience, just to understand who is Justin Walters. So I guess what's your background and, and how you got into to GeoForce? Yeah, so I've, I've been in uh, offshore oil for, for a while. Um, started, though, in the refinery uh, and uh, petrochemical refining, uh, refining uh, realm. We did a lot of service company work there um, and then moved on into, uh, out, you know, out of the... Uh, out of the field into sales. Uh, once I kind of got my bearings on, you know, uh, how the industry worked and, you know, that that was something that I wanted to, you know, stay in for a while. Um, I got into sales, got into uh, GeoForce in 2015. Uh, and knowing that side of the business, I understood the need for what they were trying to do in that market. Mm. Uh, locating equipment in remote areas especially offshore uh, I understood the logistics of that so it was an easy transition and they had uh, a remarkable um, business plan and uh, it was, it's neat to work in that in that uh, you know with that kind of technology so so maybe you do want to give some just so the listeners understand some use cases where you were actually using technology in that oil fields like you mentioned that you already understood the need so okay. what, what were some examples Given the remoteness of that work, it's very it's very important that the equipment, the tools needed to perform the work come in a timely manner uh, with the right equipment, making it to the right place. So for, for us to do our job when I was in the field, um, having visibility, the rig managers having the visibility to those CCUs and, and their travel, uh, making it to the rig, Oh, it was, it was hugely important. Um, they were able to schedule projects uh, in a more accurate manner, knowing what equipment was on its way and where it was in the route. Mm. And then so, and then you mentioned obviously the intro to GeoForce in 2015, mm -hmm. you said. So, so what it, you, that attracted you to, to GeoForce, just knowing that there was technology out there to help track assets? Yeah, yeah. Well, at first it was, it was easy. It was, number one, it was easy for me to wrap my head around the concept, right? There's GPS, uh, um, remote monitoring concept. I understood it because I had been out there uh, waiting on equipment, and uh, that helped me, I think, relate in the in the interview process, and then talking with uh, you know our our, our founder uh, Jimmy uh, McLean, understanding you know where where he wanted to be and what he wanted GeoForce to be. I kind of I kind of got it, you know. Mm. I I'd, I'd lived it and seen those those pieces of equipment come and go. Um, so I saw, I saw the need he saw. I think. Yeah, and I think being able to talk to customers about like actual experiences that you've gone right. through is like is like a massive advantage. Yeah, as well. Yeah. Like if you're talking to someone that's never actually seen heavy equipment before, for example, right, and then trying to sell them on a technical solution around asset management, like it it gets it's a you're trying to like yeah. almost like learn on the fly where you've got that that experience it would have helped a lot. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, if you've never seen uh, yellow iron move from one job to the next, uh, it's hard for you to understand maybe some of the in in the small details of how that equipment needs to be monitored from mm -hmm. A to B. That, yeah. that's, that's probably the biggest thing. Yeah. You relate that to the customer and then, you know, they, they know that you are, they get the impression that you're uh, you know what you're talking about. Yeah. And it's easy to and I think a big thing that I've even noticed is like when people are unsure of what they're selling, mm -hmm. they'll go back to spitting like brochure facts and customers see yeah. straight through yeah. that, like straight 100%. through it. Yeah. Where, where if you can actually relate to like someone's business and they're like, wait a second, this person actually knows what he's talking about. Yeah. That's, that's a game changer. Because mm -hmm. then, then it's like, oh, well, then these are the four facts that are important that I think are going to be in, like relevant to your business. Right. But let's talk about actual use cases where yeah. this actually helped me in my past life or whatever it might be. Sure. Um, no, it's 100% correct. Confidence 
And, and that's sales in anything, but when you take uh, the oil field, for example, or construction or uh, any, any uh, type of field where these people have been doing this for years, you know, and there's a sense of pride in that work, and they can sniff you out pretty quick if you don't know what you're talking about. So being confident in, in relaying mm-hmm. that, they, they feel comfortable moving with a technology provider that knows what they're talking about. Yeah, definitely. So then maybe just for the audience, do you want to give a brief history on, on who actually is GeoForce mm-hmm. and what the history is in the equipment rental industry? Yeah, sure. So uh, founded in 2007 uh, by uh, Jimmy McLean. Jimmy worked for Schlumberger, and I think that's where he kind of, he was an engineer for Schlumberger. I think that's where he kind of recognized a need. Uh, there was a white space in the market for a ruggedized piece of equipment to track, uh, to track equipment. A ruggedized piece of technology, I should say. So I think he saw um, a white space there, created what he thought would be uh, the flagship you know, product, and which it still is today in our GT. Um, and it just started growing from there. Uh, born in, in, the offshore, in the offshore oil and gas market, and since expanded to many, many uh, verticals. Yeah. So maybe you mentioned like the flagship product, the GT. Like what is the, what is the GT? Yeah. So the GT product is a satellite device um, built with, uh, it's hermetically sealed. It's, uh, it's, you know, we like to say it's indestructible. It's bulletproof, right? Uh, you know, it's a device. It's got a stainless steel bezel meant to be mounted on extremely, uh, in extremely rugged conditions, extreme conditions, and holds up quite nicely. So you've got a satellite device, ruggedized, reporting once, twice, uh, up to four, five, six times a day, that's getting, you know, seven, eight years of battery life. So not having to touch that that equipment over and over again is a huge benefit, you know, yeah. benefit for our customers. And then, and then I'm assuming there's like a suite of products as well. So you've got the ruggedized one and there's like other products that are Correct. in that line so as well. So we, we go from the, we, the ruggedized, uh, you know, essentially we, we put everything to three buckets, you know, your vehicles powered and non-powered, right? So as you, as you move across the spectrum, you have the GT and the ruggedized uh, selection. We have cellular uh, three wire devices uh, to uh, tap into you know, powered equipment for engine data and stuff like that. And then, uh, and then you have some other offerings where there might be um, a need for just a simple location, but it's cellular. We're not going offshore. We're not going out of range. So I've learned uh, through the years of being here that the more, uh, the more use cases that come across your desk, you know, you've got to expand that offering and uh, it may not be a huge white space, but you definitely want to cover it. Mm. And then so bringing this back to the equipment rental industry, mm-hmm. so like what are some of the, the use cases that, that GeoForce provides at the moment? Uh, so we, we, you know, we have a maintenance offering, and that's a huge piece for, for these, uh, these, these yellow, yellow iron, uh, large-scale uh, construction equipment. They want to be able to monitor engine runtime and then create a maintenance schedule around that. So we offer that uh, in our platform. Um, we, have, we have a customer right now that has ground heaters in a very remote area. And we were able to put a ruggedized device that still gave them engine runtime so that they could calculate fuel consumption and, uh, and work orders for their uh, field techs to go out there and keep, keep those, uh, those ground heaters running. Because if they don't run, then, you know, that puts them behind schedule mm. on, their, on their project. So that was a great that was a great use case and, and, and that one in particular like if you don't have telematics devices on your equipment and mm-hmm. something goes wrong that's a massive effort to send someone out oh to the job site to do, and then it might be oh i could have done this remotely or i could have like got the right parts that i need to solve this problem so is that like part of the discussion as well yes absolutely so we all know that you know time is money and you, you send a field tech in a vehicle with consuming fuel uh and then paying him his time to go out there and figure out whatever's wrong with that piece of equipment you're right you're exactly right you're you're saving the the roi is not hard to uh to make out you can make it out pretty quick Mm. and then with engine hours then like obviously things are out on rent uh being able to take some of that data and Mm -hmm. and see what the hours are used during the rental as well is that correct so uh you're putting engine hour runtime 
uh, on on our platform it shows up in the bar graph situation where we show you each day uh, how many hours that piece of equipment's being run. Well, what does that do for you? That that gives you the ability to make sure that your customers aren't overusing the equipment to the point of uh, disabling it. Um, and that's huge. You know, when your piece of equipment goes down, especially because of a customer, you know, uh, overuse, that, uh, that, takes, that takes a money-making piece of equipment out of your fleet. Mm. And then, like, uh, also if someone said that they uh, want to call the equipment off rent, are they still using the equipment? Correct. So we see that a lot. Uh, we have a customer right now that we put engine runtime devices on their equipment. Their issue was over the weekend, they would get, they would get notified that, hey, we're not using the equipment. The end user is not using the equipment. But it's an oil and gas or a construction type uh, uh, end user. We know that they're running the equipment, but we can't prove it. Now you can prove it, not to, you know, stick it to that end user, but to keep everybody on one pane of glass to say, hey, mm. you know, we, 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 we want to be your uh, provider of equipment, but we also need to ensure that our, our pieces of equipment are being taken care of uh, and then bill correctly, right? Yeah. So they're able to recoup that, that, uh, that money uh, over the weekend. Well, there's, there's, there's a few things there. So obviously uh, you were, they were using the machine, maybe it's on a five-day rental and they were using it on Saturday and Sunday, so there could be an extra day rate for those two days. Correct. But then also I'm assuming most companies would have like a, a maximum amount of hours that they can use it in a day, week, or month. So them saying there's an excess charge coming and trying to automate that or at least notify someone to be aware of that. Of course. Yeah, of course. Um, we also see, we see it in, in many different markets. We also see it uh, where we will geofence for them different, uh, maybe it's a project, maybe it's a home yard where all of their equipment uh, stays. And we'll see that we can put a we have we have a rental manager system that will uh show them hey this is outside of your home yard but it's showing off rent so you're missing rental revenue mm. and that that's that's a big one because uh it only takes a few pieces of equipment being outside the home yard obviously on jobs but not being recorded that you're charging for it that's an easy roi yeah, and then so the non-powered stuff. So, like, what's some examples of equipment that's used on? Oh man, uh, in in the construction industry, a lot of times the attachments are are an afterthought. You know, tracking the attachments is always an afterthought. For what we what we provide, we have the ability to give you a ruggedized piece of equipment that that'll stand up to a breaker or or a, a bucket uh, that you can dig earth with and and not worry about the tracking device. So. That's that'd be that'd be a non-powered piece that that normally you wouldn't think to track. Mm. And yeah, and then obviously that uh, machinery. Oh, actually, one question I did have around the hours was yeah. uh, one of the I guess challenges I, I've noticed some rental companies have is they've got the engine run hours and then the operating hours. So when it's in idle mode, right? Potentially. So are you tracking both of those things? We are, um, and it's all a lot of that is dependent on how you how you hook up the the uh, the, like the, the canvas or something. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, the you know these pieces of equipment now are spitting out data that, that they weren't you know ten years ago, um, and we're able we're able to pull that data in and give the give the um, the platform user uh, more information to make business decisions on. Yeah, and that. and then so when someone does buy. Uh, a bunch of fleet from various OEMs. Mm -hmm. Sometimes those OEMs provide uh, trackers as part of a mm -hmm. solution now. Mm -hmm. And then you've got, so then one of the, the challenges that I, I hear a lot from people is I have to log into like five different yeah. uh, tracking websites to then see right. the information and then bringing Geoforce in as an example, that's actually a sixth one. Mm -hmm. So is there some way to like amalgamate the data or combine or h how does that typically work? I th this, is, this is a big topic in our industry, right? I mean, you have all, like you said, all these OEMs with their own proprietary way of getting you the data. Um, it's gonna be, it's very hard in this industry to be agnostic. You know, everybody's building equipment and they're building it, you know, the way that they think is best and that means that the data is coming through, like you said, eight different ways. Um, to, to piggyback on that, you know, most yards that we see, it's not OEM exclusive. You know, you've got multiple different 
uh, manufacturers uh, making up a, a product line for any any one rental company. Mm. Um, I think the way that that we view our our role in the industry for that reason is we will be able to put a match a device with a piece of equipment and get you on one pane of glass. So at least at the at the very least, we may not be giving you uh, you know some of the more proprietary information that that a uh, an OEM solution is going to give you, but at the very least, we'll put your entire fleet on one pane of glass and give you engine runtime and location. Yeah. And I think I think that's becoming. I think this industry is realizing that we don't have to overcomplicate it. I need to know my, where my equipment is. I need to know how long it's running, and that's enough. Uh, we can make good business decisions or better business decisions on that data alone. Um, and I don't, I don't have to, like you said, I don't have to go through six or seven yeah. platforms to get it. Yeah, and I think what's important is to, if you take those two things you just mentioned and figuring out what the use cases are for the various points. So yeah. something that I always say is like anyone can put dots on a map. Yeah. Yeah, that, 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 that's nothing special. There's, there's heaps of companies. What's special is when you can understand a rental business and what are the scenarios where someone can use that data to then make decisions. And I think that's where I think the big difference comes in with a partner that understands rental and just someone that is slapping some GPS trackers on a, on a bit of gear. So I think that you between Renner and Rennie, Companies like us are that conduit to get them that data, right? And, and the way that if we, we can do that in a way that solves their, uh, you know, their pain points and their, their business problems, we talk a lot about business drivers. You know, the first thing that I'll, the first conversation that I'll have with, the, with a prospect is, hey, where, where are you lacking visibility and what are you trying to solve? If you, if you, if you can't tell me, very plainly that you have a ten thousand, fifty thousand dollar a month problem, then you know uh, I don't know that that you need a solution, right? But most of the time, I go to I go to a customer. What are your pain points? What problem are you trying to solve? What is the equipment type? And we go through a list of things, and they explain, hey, you know, I'm I think I'm losing uh, money on on missed rental days. I've got customers that keep equipment too long. Um, and I, th those, those things are where the dots on a map, it becomes more than that when you can sh show that, you know, put dollar signs mm. on all that. Yeah, Back definitely. in their pocket, you know. I agree. And so so then with the, the hardware side of things, like let's say that I, I want to partner with GeForce and, and deck out, I don't know, 150 assets. Sure. Uh, what is the process for me to get those assets like like uh, with the, the trackers actually installed? Yeah, so uh, what we'll do is a lot of times I'll come out and we'll make sure that we have the right solution, first off. Um, we'll get you the devices and uh, our process is we'll have a field guy come out and maybe either train your mechanics on how to install everything so that they're self-sufficient or we can go ahead and just outfit everything if you if you want to do it that way. Uh, we offer both. Yeah, because I think that's definitely something that a lot of rental companies would be interested in, like mm -hmm. upskilling their own team so then they can be the like the, have control over like when and how they deploy the assets. Right. Uh, like it might be when it comes off rent, then you want to install it or whatever the scenario might be. So it be might a bit harder to schedule someone to go out, but I think the flexibility is is a, is a pretty important factor. Yeah, uh, definitely. There's some uh, some some details there that you have to make sure are straight. Sometimes it's not always the best thing to wire a three wire to an oil pressure switch. You know, some pieces of equipment, it makes sense, some don't. Um, obviously, if you wanna get that key on, key off, uh, engine start, engine stop, uh, data point, you don't wanna just do it to a power on because that key could be forward and you're getting false positives on engine runtime uh, hours accumulating. Mm. So it's important for us, we think, to, you know, uh, I guess outfit your mechanics with the knowledge that we have so that they can just self-sufficient go and, and, and as new equipment comes in, they can outfit it. So I was actually going through the GeoForce website and there was a logo there that stood out to me. That's a, a close person to the or company close to the podcast, which is Kenner Tire, which yeah. have 180 locations across 
Australia and I gave them a buzz and they confirmed that they actually used the GeoForce solution for some That's of right. their their uh, their assets. So so where do they fit into the GeoForce world? Uh, you know, they were looking for a uh, a solution for their light their light duty trucks. They wanted a uh, uh, engine runtime. You know, give them some data on engine runtime and location. And uh, we were able to outfit uh, their their light duty trucks. Yeah. And then, like, why like why do you think they partnered with with GeoForce? I think you know we're we're a well established uh, provider globally. Uh, we have a presence in uh, we have offices in Canada, Brazil, Australia, uh, and obviously the U.S. So you know. 1,500 uh, customers and about 180,000 devices deployed globally. I think that gave them uh, a sense of, hey, these guys know what they're doing and they can help us out. And, and it's working quite well. So with the Kenart's Hire solution then, was there any particular use cases that you were aware of that they were using your telematics data for? Uh, yeah, so they installed our device on their light duty trucks. Um, and the main thing was they wanted to recoup the uh, toll charges on some of these rental contracts. So uh, they were able to build out the geofences in their platform and then use our telematics data uh, to relate to the geofences and, and get those those charges automatically put back on those contracts. Yeah, that, that, that's a great example because I think, yeah, something like that, if you don't have that telematics data in their software that they have the geofence, that's a manual right. process that you have to do at the end of it, each contract or during the contract. So, right. so that's, that's a really good example of where if you just take uh, uh, dots on a map, who cares? Right. There's an a example there where you're saving time in your staff having to get the email or mm -hmm. paper from the toll charging company to manually add that to a rental contract to then bill out and you're generating, possibly recouping more money uh, throughout that time as well. So right. there's, there's a lot of touch points there. So rather coming in just saying, oh, we do GPS trackers, this is a, a solution that actually affects the end branches and our accounts team. So yeah. they're the sort of things that I love. And, and, and we won't go into all of them, but you could, you could dive into scheduled servicing uh, or, or, sure. or re-rents, or you could dive into um, um, uh, excess hours. There's all these little things, and I, I always make sure that like when people are investigating a, a telematics provider, don't just think about it as a way to reduce your theft and know where things are. Right. Uh, it, it is what's, what are the things that we can integrate this with our current ERP provider or software to then try and automate that, or the rental software to try and automate those steps. Like a really important point. Yeah, yeah. Look, I mean, the, the, the data is what's important, right? And so that's what we're seeing a lot of uh, hey, do you have an open API? You know, can we can we can we bring this into our system? Which we 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 love that part of it, you know, as well. I mean, of course, we want you on our platform, but being part of the telematics world, we we really want to solve your problems above everything else. And if if us getting you the data from our devices into uh, a way that you digest it locally is is what you prefer, absolutely. Yeah. So other than hardware, so does GeoForce also provide software? Correct. So we have a uh, software offering. Um, we have a couple add-on uh, uh, modules, as we call them. But the, the main platform is going to be dots on a map uh, with your uh, you know, geofencing involved. We, we have a team that will you know, hold your hand and, and, and get all that started off the ground and, and get you rolling. Um, and then we, we, we also you, know, you have a maintenance piece. And then you have uh, a rental management piece. And the rental management piece is interesting. Um, what I see a lot is a lot of these companies, some of the mid-level companies, they don't want to really bite off a large um, monthly license, software license on like an R RTMS or a, a, a rental management software. So they, they like our offering, which is uh, a little less expensive, but it's kind of like a rental management light, if you will. You know, you've got the, the telematics data paired with a, a simple on-off rent, and then be able to pull reports based on, you know, what's on rent, what's off rent, what's, you know, in my yard available for use. Mm. So that, that's a nice piece. Yeah, and then the maintenance side as well mm. ties back into that. The maintenance side tied back into that, absolutely. So uh, with engine runtime equipment, uh, or I'm sorry, engine runtime devices on your equipment. You can 
schedule out maintenance, make a maintenance uh, plan, and and uh, and monitor that for when equipment comes back in for servicing. Yeah, very nice. So I want to talk about the ARA a little bit. Yeah. So we are at the show in Orlando. So what do you typically get out of attending these types of events? Oh man, leads, leads. No, I'm a sales <laughs> guy. So it's it's look, I get I get to understand where where the industry is going. Um, this this equipment out here, it's changing every year. It's getting smarter. It's getting uh, more efficient. Um, and as a as a as a provider of a tech of a technology in this in this uh, this industry, we've got to pay attention to that. You know, we've, we've got to see what is the next thing, what is the next data point, you know, and and that's that's why that that's some of the things that we really like to get out of these shows. Mm. And have you come to many of these shows in the past? Like, is yeah. So uh, a few years ago, we were at ARA uh, Las Vegas. Uh, fantastic show. That was actually the first one for me. Um, and man, what, what, what a what, what a great time! Uh, always learn a lot. Uh, like I mentioned, just the, the new things that are up and coming in this rental space. Mm. And then obviously the networking opportunity to, to oh meet. Oh my gosh! Yeah, uh, I was I was just speaking with uh, some 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 guys that that have rental uh, equipment in South Louisiana, which is where I'm based out of. Um, all the way over here in Florida, you know, they're doing the same thing. They're learning what's going on, and then. Uh, obviously, we have a global presence with uh, people like Canards that are that are here walking around. So yeah. it's neat to get to see everybody, and, and uh, you know, especially after a time where we really didn't get to see everybody for a while. You know, there was a couple of years there through COVID and everything where uh, we kind of had to work remote. So yeah. it's nice to be out and about. And then, obviously, on the the Saturday and Sunday, there was the events where you could go to like the the, the speakers mm -hmm. as well. And and you spoke in front of three hundred people. Oh, well, lucky you. <laughs> You know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I could do it again, but uh, I, I think, you know, I think it worked. But out I think okay. you walked into that like not knowing it, so it was one of those things you right. couldn't be really nervous until you actually got there. Yeah, <laughs> which may may have been better. You know, maybe it was better that I didn't know it was coming. Yeah. Uh, but no, it, it was good. There was a lot of a lot of great speakers, uh, United Rentals, and, and a few others that uh, gave their spin on, on on how they view the market and then and where they see it going, and that's that's really great for us to stay up to speed. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And obviously we're on Super Bowl weekend, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Look, uh, you know, I don't know who you're going for, but uh, the Chiefs pulled it out, man. They, they, <laughs> Patrick Mahomes, is uh, he's a beast. I, they definitely shot him up at halftime, yeah. Like he was limping off 100%. and then he came out firing. Yeah. The, the, I think that was a little obvious. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. So, so look, good, to be, good to learn a little bit more about you as well. So, um, so over your career, who do you think has paid a big influence on you from a mentor? perspective I, I've had a few um, I can say that I've been extremely blessed at geo since I've been at geoforce to have uh, an admin staff and, and a, and a uh, direct reports that, that have just been fantastic for me um, probably those those uh, VP of sales uh, roles at geoforce have been just just exceptional you know they, they've uh, taught me how to be confident and learn about what I'm selling so that when you go out, you, you, you come off as, as a subject matter expert. And um, yeah, I've, I've, been, I've been blessed in that area. Yeah, very nice. And so someone that's maybe finishing school or getting out of college or looking into a trade or whatever it is and, and want to join any industry, but let, let's obviously talk about the equipment rental industry. Yeah. Like what advice would you give to that person that's starting their career? Oh man. Um, I think this applies broadly, but it, but especially in an industry where people can see through if you don't know what you're talking about, um, it would be work ethic. I mean, these these are all hardworking folks in a in a a uh, an industry that uh, you know these are blue collar workers that are they're out there you know renting to. Uh, Big, big construction sites, they're building things, there's a lot of pride in the work. If you don't have a work ethic that, that, that imitates that and, and shows that, and that, that's another thing is, I think, I think the, the generation that's coming up, we may be losing that work ethic. And I, and I think it's important for these young kids to, to say, hey, if, you, if, I, if I work this hard, it'll pay off this much. So mm. work ethic is definitely it. 
we're, we're missing. Yeah, I think it's like it's it's hard to see what's on the other side when you put that effort in. But then when you get there, you realize that you wouldn't have got to that place without all that experience. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And no it just doubt. doesn't just like it put on a platter. Like you gotta gotta work through those things. And in the rental industry in particular, like I've spoken to many general managers, CEOs, branch managers, like they wouldn't be shy of doing any of the jobs that one of the new startup is, whether it's moving equipment around or, or flushing out a, a, a portable toilet, like whatever it is. Yeah, whatever it's got, yeah. Like sweeping the floor. Yeah. And so, like. I would agree. No, yeah. no 100%. Uh, we, we, I've seen that in multiple places I worked, but the, 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 successful, the successful organizations are where the top doesn't mind getting down to the bottom and, and, and showing them, you know, how it's done. Yeah, definitely. And so finally, how do you define success? Oh man. Uh, I think that, I, I think that success defined by anybody else other than yourself is just an opinion. So I think you need to have a clear direction of what you want to achieve and whether you write that down, whether you, you know, uh, you know, tuck that away and look at it years later and say, hey, you know, I, 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 this is what I wrote down. I, I'm here. Uh, maybe that's your success. But I think it's definitely everybody's version is going to be a little different. Um, you know, for, for me, uh, am I am I happy? Am I am I doing what I something I love, um, which I absolutely am? Am I learning? Am I, have, I, have I reached a point where I'm just not interested in my learning? You know, that, that's not success. Mm. So I think it's, it's if you still have room to grow, and, and, and you're, but, but you are, you're enjoying what you do, and that's, that's, that's got to be success. Yeah, nice. And you, went, you mentioned the word happy. Yeah. So, so yeah. What, what makes you happy? Man, what makes me happy? So I'm, I'm, I'm a simple guy, you know, from, from South Louisiana. So what makes me happy is – a work-life balance that that promotes time with my family and uh, and, a, and a, a lifestyle that, that they enjoy. So, Geoforce is great about that. Um, that is happiness to me. I get to do the things that I love to do with my family uh, and have a satisfying professional career as well. Yeah, and you're and you're promoting South Louisiana instead of uh, instead of instead of Theo Von. Yeah, <laughs> doing right. the opposite. Yeah, no doubt. Look, oh man, I love that guy. But yeah, yeah. Oh, that's amazing. All right. Well, thank you very much for coming on the Rental Journal podcast. Thank you for having me.